to Vivekananda. We want that education by which character is formed, a strength of mind is increased, the intellect is expanded, and by which one can stand on one's own feet. This is the purpose of education which we are imparting. And uh, uh, with all dedication, might, vigor. And uh, then after, I would like to say and quote on this occasion, August occasion, uh, the, uh, the line of great uh, poet W.B. Yeats. Education is not filling a pail, but lighting a fire. Education is not filling a pail, but lighting a fire. Schools and colleges act as catalyst to ignite that fire. I believe in this, uh, in his notion, in his um, um, uh, affirmation. And uh, before going to the point, I would like to uh, give a brief history of uh, the education policy. In uh, the first education policy was introduced in our country in the year 1968. Uh, and then second uh, education policy was introduced uh, in 1986. As I remember that uh, Honorable P.P. Narsimha Rao uh, was the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister of this country. He was a learned man, uh, knowing so many nine languages, as I know. And then after a long gap in 2017, uh, under the uh, chairmanship of ISRO head, uh, Dr. K. Kastru Rangam, the uh, present Prime Minister, Honorable Narendra Modi ji, had constituted a committee and uh, they had submitted a, the draft of national education policy in 2019. And on 20th July 2020, during COVID pandemic across the world, we were facing that. Uh, Diplomatic situation, and uh, this was uh, produced and uh, approved by the cabinet. It was not discussed in the parliament in detail, but uh, it is in discussion. And uh, I believe that there are so many positive uh, recommendations uh, which uh, will have a positive impact uh, on the field of education. But there are certain issues which needs to be uh, need to be addressed and uh, i think and i hope and believe that the deliberations of this seminar conference would be sent to the concerned authorities uh, to take into cognizance education is fundamental for achieving full human potential developing an equitable and just society and promoting national development providing universal access to quality education is the key to India's continued ascent and leadership on the global stage in terms of economic growth, social justice, and equality, scientific advancement, national integration, and cultural preservation. Universal high quality education is the best way forward for developing and maximizing our country's rich talents and resources for the good of the individual the society, the country, and the world. India will have the highest population of young people in the world over the next decade, and our ability to provide high quality educational opportunities to them will determine the future of our country. The world is undergoing rapid changes in the uh, knowledge landscape with various dramatic scientific and technological advances, such as the rise of big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, many unskilled jobs worldwide may be taken over by machines. Even we have come across this situation that robotic surgery have started taking place in our country also, uh, particularly involving uh, mathematics, computer science, and data science in conjunction with multidisciplinary abilities across the sciences. Social sciences and humanities will be increasingly in greater demand. And now I want to emphasize uh, the National Education Policy 2020. This education policy lays particular emphasis 
on the development of the creative potential of each individual it is based on the principle that education must develop not only cognitive capacities both the foundational capacities of literary and numeracy and higher order cognitive capacities such as critical thinking and problem solving but also social ethical and emotional capacities and dispositions the teacher what is the role of a teacher or uh, what uh, has been emphasized in this education policy the teacher must be at the center of the fundamental reforms in education system the new education policy must help re establish teachers at all levels as the most respected and essential member of our society because they truly shape our next generation of citizens it must do everything to empower teachers and help them to do their job as effectively as possible the new education policy must help recruit the very best and brightest to enter the teaching profession at all levels by ensuring livelihood respect dignity and autonomy while also instilling in the system basic methods of quality control and accountability the new education uh, policy must provide to all students irrespective of their place of residence a quality education it is a must with particular focus on historically marginalized disadvantaged and under uh, uh, privileged groups education is a great leveler and is the best tool for achieving economic and social mobility inclusion and equality initiatives must be in place to ensure that all students from such groups despite inherent obstacles are provided various targeted opportunities to enter and excel in the academic system just i want to give a throw light some uh, on the previous issue uh, and what has been uh, modified in this issue uh, in this uh, policy the implementation of previous policies on education has focused largely on issues of access and equity a major development since the last policy of 1986 it was uh, amended in 1992 has been the right of children to free and compulsory education act 2019 which laid down legal underpinnings for achieving universal educational system and now principle of this policy i would like to emphasize on this the purpose of the education system is to develop good human beings capable of rational thought and action possessing compassion and empathy courage and resilience scientific temper and creative imagination with sound ethical moorings and values it aims at producing engaged productive and contributing citizens for building an equitable inclusive and plural society as envisaged by our constitution a good education institution is one in which every student feels welcomed and cared for where a safe and stimulating learning environment exists where a wide range of learning experiences are offered and where good physical infrastructure and appropriate resources conducive to learning are available to all students attaining these qualities must be the goal of every educational institution however at the same time there must be seamless integration and coordination across institutions and across all stages of education the vision what is the vision of this policy the national education policy envisions an education system rooted in indian ethos that contributes directly to transforming india that is bharat sustainably sustainably it is into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high 
quality education to all and thereby making India a global knowledge superpower. The policy envisages that the curriculum and pedagogy of our institutions must develop among the students a deep sense of respect towards the fundamental duties and constitutional values, bonding with one's country, and a conscious awareness of one's roles and re responsibilities in a changing world. Now, I would like to highlight the, the things which are uh, in the All India Survey on Higher Education 2019-20. The key points I would like to highlight on this uh, August occasion, it is of prime importance, that the survey of 2019-20 AISHE survey covers all inst institutions of higher education in the country registered with AIC code and uh, I emphasize there are 1043 universities in our country, 42,343 colleges and 11,779 standalone institutions listed in AIC web portal and out of them 119 universities, 39,955 colleges and 9,599 standalone institutions have responded during the survey. 307 universities are affiliating that is having colleges. We have to take into account that we are having 135 crore uh, population, that we are ha having 396 universities wh which are being managed privately, they are private universities. 42, uh, 420 universities are located in rural areas. There are 552 general, 177 technical, 63 agriculture and allied, 66 medical, 23 law, 12 Sanskrit and 11, 11 language universities and rest 145 universities are of other categories. These are the figures which are in the uh, list of AIG, All India Survey on Higher Education. The top eight states in terms of highest number of colleges in India, you people are included in them, are uh, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. College density. The number of colleges per lakh eligible population, per population in the age group of 18 to 23 years, varies from 7 in Bihar to 59 in Karnataka as compared to all India average of 30. We are lagging behind. I belong to Bihar. That's why uh, there is a uh, need to the present government to take uh, cognizance. 60.56% colleges are located in rural 10.75% colleges are exclusively for female. Only 2.7 colleges run PhD program and 35.04% colleges run postgraduate level programs. 66.6% of the colleges are having enrollment less than 100 this is an alarming situation and government, uh, all the uh, uh, state governments and the central government should take uh, notice of it that colleges which are having enrollment less than 100 students and only 4% colleges are enrollment more than 3000 colleges. I, uh, I have been teaching since last 27 years at College of Commerce Arts and Science Patna which is having 18,000 students and having 18 uh, uh, traditional courses and 16 vocational courses. So right from inter, uh, graduation, post graduation and law and PhD also. So th th this is really alarming that there are some colleges which are having less than 100 students. Government should take into account all this. And total enrollment in higher education has been estimated to be 38.5 million with 19.6 million boys and 18.9 million female girls. Female constitute 49% of the total enrollment. It is good. It is at par with the male uh, uh, students. 
gross gross enrollment ratio this is uh, uh, of prime importance ger in higher education in india is 27.1 which is calculated for 18 to 23 a years of age group gi for male population is 26.9% and for female it is 27.3 and now i want to emphasize on the core issue that gross enrollment ratio of scheduled caste sc community it is 23.4 and for scheduled tribe it is 18% as compared to national gr of 27.1 they are lagging behind uh, 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 from the national average of gr in higher education and then after it is also because we have been teaching uh, uh, we taught uh, for uh, two years during pandemic in distance mode uh, distance enrollment constitutes about 11.1% of the total enrollment in higher education of which 44.5 are female students female girls are doing uh, good and they are uh, they have exhibited their talents it is quite pertinent and they have outside outside the boys in most of the competitive examinations in cbse and in my state also and then about 79.5% of the students are enrolled in undergraduate it is a point which should be noted 79.5% of the students are enrolled in undergraduate level program about 80% and rest 20% there is a dropout case they do not move forward beyond graduation in post graduation the number of students uh, decrease and they opt any other option or they are in search of a suitable job and it is much more alarming for phd to 2,2550 students are enrolled in PhD, which is about 0.5% of the total student enrollment. This is the scenario that research work uh, is uh, not uh, in good shape condition in across the country. It needs to be strengthened and the concerned authorities should take notice of it, how to increase the number of students uh, so that uh, the number uh, may swell and the uh, 0.5% may become at least 5%. SC students constitute in research 14.7%, ST students constitute say 5.6%, OBC students constitute 37%, Muslim minority students constitute 5.5%, other minority community students constitute 2.3%. Total number of foreign students enrolled in higher education uh, is 49,348. It is very few. It is uh, not uh, uh, good. And uh, it is alarming that uh, uh, students belonging to uh, USA, UK, uh, Japan, or uh, European countries, they do not prefer India as their uh, destination for higher education. High, the highest share of foreign students come from the neighboring countries that is nepal 28.1 percent afghanistan nine nine point one percent students bangladesh 4.6 percent bhutan 3.8 percent and sudan 3.6 percent this is these are the uh, major countries from which uh, students come to study in our country there are more than 70 uh, 78.6% colleges running in private sector. It is also uh, a point which is to be noted. Uh, there are more than 78.6% colleges running in private sector, added and unaddled, taken together. There are so many colleges who do not uh, get uh, uh, any financial assistance from the state government or central government. They run on their own. Uh, but it caters to only 66.3% of the total enrollment. The total number of teachers are 15,3156, out of which about 57.5% are male teachers and 42.5% are female teachers. There is also a disparity 
um, but uh, it is not uh, so bad. It needs to be increased. Uh, at all India level, there are merely 74 female teachers for 100 male teachers. These are the uh, uh, historical facts and aspects which needs to be uh, addressed. Then it is also pertinent that pupil te teacher ratio, a student teacher ratio, PTR in universities and uh, colleges is 28 if regular mode enrollment is considered, whereas PTR, pupil student teacher ratio for universities and its constant units is 18 for regular mode, 38,986 students were awarded PhD level degree during 2019 with 21,577 male students got PhD degree and 17,419 female uh, students were awarded PhD degree according to All India Survey. I would like to emphasize on the point that uh, there are a lot of discriminations and uh, uh, at the, uh, the level of uh, implementation that uh, in central universities, as per record, uh, 4,297 reserve seats for teachers uh, were vacant in central universities and out of which about 988 reserve seats for ST 578 for scheduled caste and 1761 for OBC category, 628 for economically weaker section and 344 P PWD categories were vacant in central universities across India. And it was, uh, this seat was vacant for the reserve course, professor, associate professor and assistant professor. In the Raj Sabha, uh, was further informed about this that the central ministry has directed central higher educational institutions to fill up the vacancies within one year starting from September 5, 2021. Accord, according to the ministry, since August 21, 4,807 4, posts have been advertised. The selection pro process was going on it was uh, reported the education ministry also informed that 375 posts have already been recruited and i quote it uh, from the source news.career360.com and that after the passage of one year only 375 posts were uh, filled in meaning thereby about uh, 4000 uh, more than 4000 uh, post where are still lying vacant. This is the scenario. Then Central Education Institutions Reservation in Teachers Cater Act 2019 provides for the reservation in direct recruitment, recruitment, recruitment of teachers in the Central Educational Institutions across India. As per the Act, the Act which I uh, would like to uh, quote again, Central Educational Institutions Reservation in Teachers Cadre Act 2019. As per this act, no reserve post is to be de-reserved. De that can't be changed, that can't be converted into any other category. This is uh, as per this act. And uh, while I was going through and we all have been scrutinizing the pearls as well as the uh, stones which are hidden in this uh, national education policy. That uh, higher education plays an extremely important role uh, in promoting human as well as societal well-being and in developing India as envisioned in its constitution a democratic, just, socially conscious, cultured, human nation of upholding liberty, equality, fraternity and justice for education. And uh, for the purpose of developing Holistic individuals, it is essential that an identified set of skills and values will be incorporated. It was written in this uh, uh, part two, uh, in the part two, uh, 
uh, higher education, it is emphasized that for the purpose of developing holistic individuals, it is essential that an identified set of skills and values will be incorporated at each stage of learning from preschool to higher education. The policy envisions, I quote, 9.3 point from higher education uh, part two. Uh, this policy envisages, envisions a complete overall and re-energizing of the higher education system to our to uh, over the challenges and thereby deliver high quality education, uh, higher education with equity and uh, inclusion. There is emphasis on equity, Samantha. The policy's vision includes the following key change to the current system. Moving towards, <clears throat> I appreciate this portion, moving towards a highly educational system consisting of large multidisciplinary students and colleges with at least one in or near every district and with more higher education institutions across India that offer medium of instruction or programs in local or Indian languages. Moving towards a more multidisciplinary, I also appreciate this uh, recommendation, moving towards a more multidisciplinary undergraduate education. And C, third one is moving towards faculty and institutional autonomy. I have got every doubt that there is a institutional autonomy. There is a move, certain move to privatize the education institution. It is also uh, emphasized at the point uh, because time uh, within one hour I have to conclude my, paper, my lecture. I am also going through it. That uh, by the end of 2035, all educational institutions shall, those who will fulfill those uh, criteria, shall uh, become autonomous. This is the uh, affirmation of the, uh, this uh, policy. What does it mean? That it will mar the future of the poor uh, 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 community people or uh, students uh, belonging to the uh, low, uh, lower strata of the society because it is a need to privatize the education institution. It is my uh, notion because there would be board of governors, BOG, it has been mentioned. It is not good. And the financial, what does it mean? That they would be free to uh, frame their syllabus, uh, 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 fix the fee structure, recruit the head of the institution as well as teachers, and free uh, uh, to hold the examination. They would be free. They would just like a deemed university or government would not provide uh, money to such institutions. Even I was uh, going through the session, academic session yesterday for quite some time. I was having pressing engagement uh, yesterday, but I joined uh, the, uh, through Google Meet. The keynote speaker was uh, uh, saying that uh, the 6% the GDP is also being reduced, which, which is allocated for, which was allocated previously for higher education. It is also being reduced. It is alarming. How can we be able to cope up with the pressure and the increasing need? How can we be able to uh, enhance the infrastructure? There is a need that each and every district should uh, get a college or educational institution to increase uh, the number of education. Uh, GR or gross enrollment ratio. And one thing or more I would like to emphasize that financial, this is good in the principle, it appears sound uh, or uh, positive. Financial support to the students uh, would be given. Uh, it has been incorporated in this uh, education policy. Financial assistance to students shall be made available through various measures Efforts will be efforts will be made to incentivize the merit of students belonging to SC scheduled caste, ST scheduled tribe, OBC other backwards classes, and other SEDs. Private. It is in practice, but I would like to know that reservation has been implemented, and Baba Sahib Ambedkar, who belong to Nagpur, 
uh, he has, has framed the constitution that uh, they have given those who are socially and educationally backward they would be given reservation it is not caste based it is class based and uh, honorable prime minister narendra modi ji under his uh, tenure uh, constitutional amendment act was passed and 10% reservation was added to the economically weaker section belonging to uh, upper caste uh, community uh, people it's all it is okay uh, i don't have any objection those who are having less than 8 lakh annual income they have been included and they are getting the benefits but i am telling that reservations are provided are being provided in uh, government uh, 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 colleges institutions not in any private colleges just you you people are having so many private medical colleges engineering colleges the free structure my daughter has also uh, uh, got a degree from a private medical college i know uh, no it, it is uh, in crores if, if you want to pursue md ms in private medical college no poor people no student belonging to uh, middle class or lower class could be able to get admission in any private educational uh, institution especially in technical institution medical college engineering colleges it is higher i think that reservation uh, is not available uh, as per government uh, uh, record in private sector it is only available in government sector it is my through this uh, august platform i pursue i request the uh, uh, honorable director prerna college dr pravin joshi sir and dr arvind nawale sir and all the honorable professors sir that uh, it should be that private private educational institution should also give reservation reservation should be implemented it should be given i know that uh, honorable former minister uh, prakash javarkar sir and uh, hrd minister was your friend and is your close friend please do uh, this thing that it should be implemented in private sector also because there is a series of uh, uh, privatization is taking place and uh, the education sector is also going to be affected in uh, days to come and this is mar the future and career of the people belonging to the lower class and middle class people because the fee structure would be increased and the autonomy which we are having uh, being uh, a teacher in a government college or university uh, and government aided college or, or university the, the board of governor would determine or would uh, uh, be able to take every decision uh, uh, pertaining to that very teacher or related with the, the, the student as career so this is uh, not good in my view it is my personal opinion and one may disagree and i would like to say that uh, there are uh, so many positive things which have been incorporated that uh, <clears throat> the uh, gdp uh, the ger of higher education is uh, 26.3 and it, it it has been fixed that it should be increased up to 50% it is uh, the uh, uh, government's determination and we all should pursue in this uh, uh, pious endeavor and one thing i would like to uh, salute or uh, appreciate and highlight that multiple entry and multiple exit system has also been adopted or incorporated in this new national education policy that after Uh, one year <clears throat> certificate would be given to the students if you, uh, student want wants to exit the said course after two years advanced diploma after three year bachelor degree after four year research graduate they would uh, be able to call themselves research graduate and they will get the certificate and there is also that there is a uh, emphasis that every district should have a, a boarding school bal bhavan uh, for uh, enhancing the extracurricular activities sports arts and culture and one thing i would like to highlight that in this uh, national education policy mphil program has been abolished it is i i think that it was uh, good for the sake of the innovative uh, um, teaching and research work and uh, uh, specialized uh, teaching and practices uh, it should have been uh, taken into consideration 
and uh, that uh, after four year degree program uh, one can pursue uh, the, the phd course without doing ma i also i am uh, okay, okay. do not uh, release this or um, point that uh, without doing ma one can do uh, phd this is a negative recommendation i am uh, i do not think that uh, ma should be done and should be made com compulsory mandatory if you want to do pursue phd and uh, there are other aspects I, I have been asked to say something on uh, higher education only but uh, uh, nct rashtriya astar par shiksha niyamak परिषद बनाया जाएगा जीईसी सामान्य शिक्षा परिषद एच जीसी उच्च शिक्षा अनुसंधान परिषद नैक जिट इज प्राइमरी इंपोर्टेंस इन आवर स्टेट टू हंड्रेड सेवेंटी सिक्स बट ओनली ट्वेंटी आवर कॉलेज इज देर आर ओनली फाइव कॉलेज विच इज हैविंग नैक ए ग्रेड स्टेटस आवर कॉलेज इज हैविंग दैट स्टेटस वी आर फॉर्चुनेट बट we are lagging far behind because nac national assessment and accreditation council uh, visits the college and uh, give certain grade a a plus plus b c d also uh, the, the, then after rusa uh, and uh, other financial institutions uh, give grant to the concern college for the development of infrastructure and research and innovation activities so this needs to be strengthened and uh, in school also uh, the, the, the certain changes have been in school education uh, no it is up to 18 years it has been in, uh, previously it was up to 14 years uh, it is commendable job uh, that it has been in up to uh, 18 years and uh, there is a uh, certain changes in curriculum 10 plus 2 has been replaced by 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 3 2 8 foundation stage class 1 and 2 8 to 11 years of age preparatory stage class 8 to 3 to 5 uh, age uh, 11 to 14 middle stage class 6 to 8 14 to 18 age secondary stage class 9 to 12 these are the positive things and i have also taken into account the uh, things which may mar the career and future of the students who belong to the lower strata of the society government should take Uh, into account and each and every people belonging to the teaching fraternity should highlight this uh, core issue that uh, i quote 19.2 from uh, higher education documents through a suitable system of graded accreditation and graded autonomy and in a phased manner i quote the document of higher education all hei Higher, edu higher education institution in india will aim to become independent self governing institutions pursuing innovation and excellence measures will be taken uh, taken at all hei higher education institution to ensure leadership of the uh, highest quality and promote an institutional culture of excellence upon receiving the appropriate graded accreditations that deem the institution Is ready for such a move? A board of governors. This is very alarming. A board of governors, instead of uh, senior syndicate and uh, UGC, uh, board of governors (BOG) shall be established, consisting of highly qualified, competent, and dedicated individuals having proven cap capabilities and a strong sense of commitment to the institution. The BOG, board of governors. and <clears throat> of an institution will be empowered to govern the institution free of any external interference and all appointments including that of head of institutions and take all decisions regarding governance this is uh, not good and this would uh, definitely affect uh, the uh, common people and the people especially belonging to the lower strata of the society i would like to throw emphasis and uh, on the gr in usa uh, developed country 88% in usa there is 88% gr 
In GR in UK, United Kingdom, it is 60%. GR in Germany, 70%. GR gross enrollment ratio in higher education in Canada, 69%. GR in China, 51%. And in our state, GR, highest GR is of Sikkim, 76%, highest in India. GR of Tamil Nadu is 59%, Kerala 39%. In Bihar, our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Nitish Kumar has done tremendous job. And uh, in previous year, 2020, it was 14.5%. Now it has increased up to 19.3% in 2021, according to All India Higher Education Survey uh, uh, 2021. National average is 26.9%. That and Bihar, certain innovative steps have been taken, and I um, uh, recommend and I appeal to all the uh, uh, people belonging to any part of the world that uh, to in the field of women empowerment, Sri Nitish Kumarji, our honourable chief minister, has taken a, a, a unique step or a historic step that uh, right from nursery to post graduation. Women are being imparted, imparted, belonging to any category, gender category, SC, ST, obviously all girls or women have uh, are being given free education. They are not uh, paying even a single farthing for education up to post graduation. However, for vocational courses, they have to pay, but for traditional courses, IA, BAMA, IAC, BSc, MSc, ICOM, BCOM, MCOM, they need not to pay even a single farthing. This is innovative. Then. And he has also introduced cycle yojana to girls, Posak yojana, dress to the students, and uh, a scholarship after passing 10th, a scholarship after passing 12th, and certain scholarship to uh, girls belonging to uh, studying in government schools and government colleges uh, after do doing graduation. These are the steps which should be uh, practiced by other states also, uh, so that that, that and 50% uh, reservation to women in local bodies election he has given. It is first of its kind in Bihar in India that any particular state has uh, provided reservation to women 50% in local bodies election in Mukia in local bodies election women candidates they have out outside the male we people have been outside out voted by the female uh, counterparts. So we are happy that they are get, uh, getting uh, strength uh, our, and they are uh, ruling the affairs of their concerned localities and uh, villages. So I, I wanted to emphasize these positive aspects. And uh, then after, I would like to say that uh, uh, in 2018, when Honorable Sri Prakash Javarkar sir was the uh, uh, HRD minister, previously it was known as Human Resource Development Department, now it has been called Siksha Mantrale, uh, the HRD minister, he had uh, uh, said uh, the, the center targets to achieve 30% all India GR by 2022. I quote uh, Prakash Javarkar sir, honorable minister, former minister, uh, then former minister, HRD minister, but what has happened? We have not yet attained uh, 30%. It was his uh, mission that by the end of 2022, we would achieve. We are still 26.9 lagging behind. That's why the average which we have uh, targeted and we have made a uh, re re resolution, we should uh, strive our uh, best to uh, achieve that very target. And I am having less time, but I would like to emphasize on the very core issue, right? unemployment. This is only for five minutes. I joined late. That's why I will end up at 10, 11.7. I joined at 10.7. Causes of un unemployment in India. The water, because we, the Mahangai, Price rise and unemployment, these are the burning problems. I need, uh, I think that we all should focus on this and so that it may be addressed. The employment rate in India rose to 7.8% uh, in February 2020, the highest since October from 
in the previous month the, the rural area rate uh, increased to 7.4 percent and the causes are explosive increase in population slow rate of economic growth low rate of capital formation backwardness of indian agriculture lack of main power planning defective educational system i want to emphasize defective we are just producing the uh, students who are jobless even phd degree holders i have gone through in bihar and uttar pradesh i am particularly talking about our two states the the, the the third grade fourth grade and even for sweeper job phd degree holders and uh, mba degree holders and engineers had applied it was uh, viral on social media what is the state of affairs uh, uh, and uh, honorable prime minister has said that uh, two crore uh, job would be provided every year it could not be done because this unemployment is a uh, is the greatest challenge which needs to be addressed the and uh, charles darwin's theory of evolution is uh, very uh, pertinent or uh, applicable there is a throat cut competition prevalent in, in every walk of life in every uh, for every in every um, uh, discipline that a struggle for existence survival of the fittest we are still uh, struggling a lot to get a job for 10 or 20 uh, post 2000 Uh, students uh, yeah, or aspirants are there and uh, faulty educational system and then defective educational system no significant place to to cottage and a small estate industry it should be strengthened uh, cause of distinguished unemployment immobility of labor we have uh, uh, seen the daily wage workers and the laborers who are working uh, across the country Uh, far uh, away from their native place uh, during pandemic uh, so many people have uh, been crushed mort and uh, they had to sacrifice their life the so, uh, workers who are working in the unorganized sectors should also be given a uh, proper attention by the government and and what are the effects of unemployment increase in poverty loss of human resources political instability social problems industrial disputes and there are also certain uh, in first plan by uh, uh, five year plan it was 3.3 in second it increased to 5.3 uh, unemployment during five year plans in third plan 7.1 in sixth uh, 12.0 seventh plan 13.98 plan it is increasing 23. the ninth plan 34.0 tenth plan 35.3 so the number is swelling with uh, every five year plan and i think that i get it to virus and stone unemployment occurs when people are able to work and would willingly accept the prevailing wage paid to someone with their skills cannot find employment the types of unemployment there are several types i don't want to go into detail voluntary employment disguised employment open employment in open there are three categories clinical structural frictional then after seasonal employment it is applicable in agriculture sector technical employment after the uh, the just like we, we, electric car and scooters have been introduced what would be the fate of the automobile industries who are preparing uh, uh, diesel engine or petrol engine cars after 15 years the cars are uh, uh, and uh, not being uh, allowed to run on the road according to honorable nitish gadkari sir the chairman uh, the, the minister pat nirman uh, rural uh, road construction and there are other aspects i want that uh, people should uh, get uh, certain i am just uh, summing up uh, what are the ways uh, so that we can uh, cope up the situation government needs to keep a strict watch on the education system and should try to implement new ways to generate a skilled labor force effective 
implementation of present programs like make in india skill india startup and stand up india there is a need for national employment policy that would encompass a set of multi dimensional intervention can covering a whole range of social and economic issues affecting many policy spheres and not just the areas of labor and employment the policy would be a critical tool to contribute significantly to achieve the goals of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development and other things the underlying principles of the national education policy employment policy may include enhancing human capital through skill development it is of prime importance enhancing human capital through skill development creating sufficient number of quality jobs for all citizens in the formal and informal sectors to absorb who are available and willing to work and there are also certain strengthening social cohesion and equity in the labor market supporting self employed per, uh, persons by strengthening their capabilities to improve their earnings and ensuring employees basic rights and developing an education training and skill development system aligned with the changing requirements of the labor market and i would like to sum up that it should be our motto that sarve bhavantu sukhna sarve saddu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukh bhag bhave and i would like to quote the inspiring lines of the robert frost the most promising lines the woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep with these words i would like to conclude i have completed one hour and uh, i wish uh, that uh, our uh, my suggestions and recommendations or observations should be taken into account and uh, maybe put forward in the right direction so that we may achieve the goal and we all should be happy thank you so much sir thank you so much sir now i invite dr arvin navle sir and request you to moderate the session over to you sir sir uh, your mic is muted sir thank you sir thanks dr snehal uh the chief organizer the director of prerna college of commerce nagpur and a very good and great friend of mine dr pravin ji joshi the management authorities resource person my virtual friend till now dr kumar chandradeep ji professor department of english patilpura university patna bihar principal of the college dr prakash ji drupkar convener dr neha samudre aqc coordinator dr liladhar revatkar dr snehal and rest organizing committee members of this student international national conference on new education policy opportunities and challenges and the rest esteemed the participants who are accessing this event through google meet at the outset i have to appreciate the talk of dr kumar chandradeep on the core topic of this conference that is nep challenges and opportunities in higher education he has very wonderfully explained the dynamics of nep 2020 the opportunities there in and the challenges in implementing it and meeting its goals and objectives friends as we turn the pages of nep 2020 document we reach the section on higher education we state that higher education must enable an individual to thoroughly study one or more specified areas of interest as well as develop character ethical and constitutional values intellectual curiosity scientific temper creativity service spirit and above all 21st century skills 
in a range of fields, including science, humanities, commerce, and other professional and vocational subjects. It is very undeniable that the NEP 2020 is moving in the direction of improving the accessibility, effectiveness, equity, and affordability of education and learning. The NEP outlines the objective for India's future education system and offers a thorough framework from elementary and secondary education to higher education in both rural and urban India. It envisions an education system rooted in Indian ethos that contributes directly to transforming India sustainably into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all and thereby making India a global knowledge superpower. It aims to produce engaged and productive citizens for building an equitable, inclusive and plural society as envisaged in our constitution. Creating excellent, thoughtful, well-rounded individuals is the long-term objective of this policy. It will undoubtedly transform our nation into a vibrant knowledge society where everyone can receive a top-notch education. Numerous novel concepts are put forth in NEP 2020 to help students acquire the right skill set at the right time, such as occasional courses along with regular studies. If students choose the best course or subject combination in line with their natural talents, the gap between industry and academia will soon be shattered. The National Research Foundation and the National Scholarship Portal, which will offer you know, financial assistance and the obligations of the institution as stated in the policy, like to increase the involvement of socially disadvantaged groups and reducing fee structure, bridging programs for students from poor educational background to offer counseling and mentorship service are also of a very important to take into account. The government's decision even to enable foreign institution to build campuses in India is also a good one move. This will allow students to experience global education quality in their own nation. So the policy's goal is that admitting international institutions would make world-class education available locally to the sustainably cheaper cost without requiring travel and will dramatically minimize human capital migration to other nations for study and career opportunities. One of the goals of this policy regarding higher education is to end the fragmentation of higher education by transforming higher education institution into large multidisciplinary universities, colleges, and HEI clusters, knowledge hubs, and so on, each of which will aim to have plus 300 enrollment to increase the global enrollment ratio in higher education. However, as per the recent statistics of AISHE, as put here by Professor Chandra Deep in detail in his talk, that is 32.6 colleges run only single program, and 60.6 of the colleges are having enrollment less than 100, and only four approximately four percent colleges have enrollment more than 3,000 students are quite alarming. The recent and the innovative investment in India at the current time is only 0.69% of GDP as compared to 2.8 in the USA or 4.3 of Israel or 4.2 in South Korea. This too has to be considered seriously. In order to maintain the quality of higher education, HEIs must be evaluated based on important factors such as research, industry connections, placements, and academic performance, among others. If the HECI can implement it properly, the advantages to its most important stakeholder may be sustainable and the objective of NEP 2020 to raise the gross enrollment ratio will be achieved. Dislike issues along with multiple entries and exist need a very vigorous, thoughtful and planned strategy to implement it and to reach the desired outcome. The aim of this policy is not just to add years and certificates to education, but also to create a competent society and NET 2020 makes this goal quite apparent. 
this policy makes everything necessary to upgrade higher education in global competencies it would transform the education sector in the country as it focuses on making education accessible equitable inclusive but only if implemented with proper plans at all levels the net 2020 has a commendable vision but how well it is implemented out will decide how effective it is if properly implemented the indian higher education system will undoubtedly improve to a standard that is acceptable worldwide the nep has put out a number of solid initiatives and measures all of which will contribute significantly to the goal of making india a worldwide knowledge superpower as intended however it is advised to include provision provisions for the mpsc upsc based central level faculty recruitment process only open access standard research publications strict and quality scrutinized api based incentive pay and promotions and rest uncovered but must be an issue in the appendixes of this policy to come in spite of the fact that the nep 2020 is a significant differentiator and the possibility of becoming a developed country is not far off the lack of clear implementation plan would delay vital reforms in the education system that are essential to india's future success overall i have full appreciation to dr kumar ji for his wonderful talk wonderful and elaborate talk i would have learned i too have learned a lot from his talk what professor kumar emphasized in his talk is that the new education policy is a great vision to change the educational landscape in the country and i agree thoroughly with him and we all should welcome it with the open arms thanks dr kumar chandradeep thanks dr neha and above all thanks to uh, my uh, very very great and good friend dr pravinda allies dr pravin joshi and thanks snehal also thank you thank you so much sir listening to both of you is an absolutely an empowering comprehensive and very educative experience for all of us i am sure that we will all gain benefit from this session thank you once again to both of you now i snehal take a leave and to wind up today's first session with word of thanks would like to hand over the charge to miss archal over to miss archal thank you a very good morning to everyone it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on the second day of the first session of two day national conference on new education policy opportunities and challenges i achita from the department of computer science on the behalf of prerna college of commerce stand here to express gratefulness and to conclude the first session of the national conference first and foremost i would like to thank dr kumar chandradeep a wonderful resource person who have enlightened all of us on the topic new education policy challenges and opportunities in higher education thank you very much sir for such an enlightening and enriching session i extend my heartiest thanks and i am very grateful to dr arvin navle sir honorable moderator of this session for expressing your sincere views we are greatly encouraged by your present gracious presence and i am sure that your talk will be immensely benefited to all we would surely love to learn a lot from you in future too thank you all for sharing your valuable time with us on the first session on the second day of the national conference now here the first session is over and the today's second session is going to begin for that sake i would like to call upon here dr preeti jas ma'am 
Till then, I am Ajay Thakur. Take your leave. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. <coughs> Arvind, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I would like to take you.